Hey everyone, this is the follow-up video to the interview between Ibrahim Traore and Alain Fouquet. And if you've not watched the first part of this video, you might want to check it out. During his exclusive interview with Alain Fouquet, Ibrahim Traore was asked about his exploits in his home country, Burkina Faso. Given that he has assumed office for over a year now, it would please the media definitely to know on what trajectory he has brought his people. The captain replied, we don't talk about that. And I even said to certain ministries of communication, that I don't want us to talk about our recovery very much. Let the villagers speak for themselves. There are several villages that have been settled, schools which have opened in several places. But often when people from the outside keep saying that there is no progress, it brings the villagers back and then they make videos to tell people it's all false. You're lying. We left so many years ago, but we just came back. We are safe. Recently, there have been some reports to really confirm that people have taken over the place. There are citizens who have made trade, you know, they've traded their market products on the market today, meaning that they've returned several months ago and have had time to cultivate. You know, I spoke earlier about patriotism and logistics. It was the second part that failed us, the logistics. Now listen, when you take, for example, the Jibo attack last November, as soon as there was an attack, there was a response from the elements in Jibo and even the air vectors the very next day with rapid intervention battalions moving towards Jibo with the supplies and continued marching at the Barabule base, the Barabule terrorist base where we've never been since 2019. It is the part from where they prepare all the attacks, where it is Barabule, Burum or even up to the border of Petagoli. They marched on terrorist bases. If there were no logistics, it would be impossible. We would have to sit down and plan the operation. We're already talking about a month of planning or even more than a month. That's how it happened. And to bring together logistics, I will tell you a secret. There have been times during certain operations here where we've had to borrow weapons from neighboring countries, come and do the operation, clean and put them back. But today, besides all of this, it gives us a very bad image of ourselves. Today, as soon as there is an attack, we can use the rapid intervention battalion. You move because they are fully equipped, ready to fight. We don't have a single second to lose. So immediately they take off and rush into battle. This is how it happens now. There are several of them that are equipped which are positioned all over the country. Ibrahim Traore also explained as the interview went on that he did not only intend to break free from the ECOWAS but completely liberate Burkina Faso from every chain of slavery. When asked about his desire to also change the franc CFA currency, he said, let things happen. You know, in everything we do, you were surprised, right? Well, many more things will surprise you, Ibrahim Traore said. It's not just the currency. Everything that is linked, which keeps us in slavery, we will break free from these bonds. It is clear and inspiring that Ibrahim Chari speaks not only for himself, but echoes the voices of the Sahel states such as Mali, Niger, which this response to the current currency in use in Central and some other parts of West Africa. As reported by Reuters.com, the collective actions of the state, having already expelled French troops and scaled back a United Nations mission in Mali, underscore their unwavering commitment to prioritizing sovereignty over convenience. Their stance regarding the euro pegged CFA francs mirrors this sentiment. Although economists and analysts caution that the decision to abandon the currency would entail greater risk and complexities compared to withdrawing from ECOWAS. In a significant development last November, the finance ministers of Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger announced their intention to explore the possibility of establishing a monetary union signaling a potential shift away from the CFA franc. Moreover, high-ranking officials from these countries have even expressed varying degrees of support for relinquishing the currency. It's like Africa is uniting again under Ibrahim Traore, at least the Sahel region. Abdurrahman Tiani, the leader of the Niger Junta, emphasized in a recent interview on state television that discarding the CFA franc will symbolize a crucial assertion of sovereignty and a vital step towards breaking free from French colonization. However, let's be clear. Transitioning away from the CFA francs entails far more than mere currency substitution or some inspiring talks. The establishment of a new central bank would necessitate navigating a complex process, including formulating monetary policies, addressing over $4.6 billion in outstanding CFA-denominated regional bonds, and managing the intricacies of a delicate economic transition. The debate surrounding the CFA franc currencies spanning West Africa and Central Africa transcends mere monetary considerations. It is deeply interwound with an emotive discourse on sovereignty and development within the French-speaking African nations, reflecting broader aspirations for self-determination and even economic empowerment. Advocates of the CFA franc extol its stability, anchored to the euro as a bulwark against economic turbulence in one of the globe's most unpredicted regions. Detractors, however, criticize it as an impediment to economic progress 
and a relic of French colonialism. Prior to a 2019 reform, member countries were mandated to maintain a portion of their foreign reserves with the French Treasury, and this sparked allegations of economic exploitation. But then, nevertheless, the unprecedented prospects of a widespread abandonment of the currency has never loomed as prominent as it does right now. It's more like a revolution is taking place. Expressing delusionism with the French CFA franc, Omar Isufu, a 25-year-old student of electrical engineering in Niamey, Niger, lamented, The French have plundered us with the CFA franc. African nations must definitively sever ties with this currency. But then, the recent spates of military coups sweeping across the arid Sahel region stems from frustration over the persistence of Islamist violence, which neither Mali's UN mission nor France's extensive anti militant campaign managed to eradicate. Now, still about the ECOWAS, in response to the coups, the ECOWAS imposed economic sanctions, as it always usually does, and that's the only result, including the freezing of assets held by the regional central bank, intensifying tensions between the new regimes and the West African Economic and Monetary Funds commonly referred to by its French acronym UEMOA. The moment UEMOA became a weapon of war, I can understand why these three countries moved to clearly free themselves from their engagements towards the Union, Hama Hamadou, a former head of Niger's tax authority, told Reuters. But then, beyond ideological issues of sovereignty and practical concerns related to sanctions, some view moving away from the CFA franc as an opportunity. And frankly, I think it is. The CFA franc has been very detrimental to these countries over the long run, said Ndongo Sambasila from the International Development Economics Associates, a network of economists focused on the global south. They have lower inflation and extra exchange rate stability, but they've suffered from an overvalued currency. All three nations boast predominantly agricultural economies, let's be frank. But you see, their lack of autonomy is setting monetary policies has actually resulted in their exports being uncompetitive and has impeded their industrial advancement, according to experts. Moreover, maintaining a fixed exchange rate with the euro seems incongruous, especially considering that the majority of West Africa's external trade is conducted in dollars. Exiting ECOWAS is already appearing to be a formidable challenge, and then how much more rivaling with the CFA franc? Unraveling their economies and disentangling their finance from the West African Economic Monetary Fund would be an even more intricate endeavor. Under the UMOA, the eight member states deposit their foreign exchange reserves with the regional central bank in Dakar, Senegal. These reserves are pooled together along with the liabilities, complicating the determination of each country's share in the event of withdrawal. Another critical issue that we should honestly face is the substantial amount of debt denominated in CFA francs. Burkina Faso, for instance, has outstanding bonds totaling over 1.2 trillion CFA francs. That's to the tune of $1.99 billion. That's much money. Mali and Niger also have significant amount of CFA denominated debt. Expressing concerns about the potential ramifications of withdrawal, a financial expert involved in regional debt insurances emphasized the likelihood of encountering turbulence. He did point out the lack of clarity regarding the listing of bonds, the currency in which they move and would be denominated, and whether the new currency would be convertible at all. There would be a lot of problems for the holders of these sovereign bonds, he said. According to experts, the tumor resulting from the withdrawal would likely isolate the three states from future financing opportunities in both regional and international capital markets. Burkina Faso's decision to cancel a bond auction following its announcement of exciting or exiting the ECOWAS reflects the lack of investor interest. The prevailing uncertainty would eventually trigger capital flights and prompt an immediate devaluation of a new currency. That's for sure. This scenario could render imports excessively costly, thereby exacerbating inflationary pressures. Charlie Robertson, head of macro strategy at FIM Partners in London, expressed concerns about the potential economic repercussions. He did estimate that withdrawing from the single currency would dent the GDP of the countries by 10 to 20 percent, like likening the situation to the onset of the Great Depression. Robertson also emphasized that such a move would represent the gravest policy error the countries would ever commit. How true that is, is still on a scale of 1 to 10, probably 4 to 6, it's on a balance. Given the substantial risk involved, the junta leaders are approaching the currency issue with caution compared to their stance on ECOWAS withdrawal. I think they are more likely to withdraw from ECOWAS than withdraw from the CFA franc. According to two governmental officials, the committee tasked with studying a new monetary union, although still on the agenda, has yet to convene. Prime Minister Chonge Magai of Mali, the sole country among the three to have previously issued its own currency, advocates for a patient approach, 
Reflecting on Mali's past experience of exiting and rejoining UMWA, Maiga emphasized the need for thorough deliberation before embarking on plans for a new currency alongside its neighbors. Talk about some experience. Addressing business leaders, Maiga stressed the importance of strategic decision making and urged Malians to consider the long term implications of such a move. He underscored and considered the need for careful assessment to ensure that valuable lessons from history inform the country's future monetary policies. Ibrahim Traoré's final words were clear about withdrawal from the ECOWAS, a move that will see no backsliding. That is for sure. That brings us to the end of this video. Tell us what you think about this video in the comment section and the best comments will of course be pinned. Please do not forget to like, subscribe to our channel and also turn on notifications. See you in the next one.